The Five Nights at Freddy's series is both famous and infamous for its many secrets. Scott Cawthon is very rarely upfront and clear with what the details in the games are actually trying to tell us, but in a way, that's what has made the series so special for such a long period of time. The most important secrets throughout the games have to be the hidden minigames. So many pieces of lore have been discovered through minigames that were incorporated into the main game to give us more clues. That's why today, I will be taking a look at all of them. I'm going to explain and discuss every single minigame that has ever been put into the Five Nights franchise. That means no cutscenes or certain easter eggs, maybe that can be another video. This video will be very time consuming, so let's get this started right away. This is one of the most famous minigames in the series, likely because it is one of the more informative ones. You control Freddy Fazbear, and you're supposed to follow the puppet who is trying to save the murdered children by giving them life through the animatronics. While you are following the puppet, you can hear letters being said out loud in the background, spelling S-A-V-E-T-H-E-M. There are different variations of this minigame because Freddy can start at different locations on the map. Also, if you choose not to follow the puppet, you can find Golden Freddy slumped over with only one of his eyes lit up. However, this could cause the minigame to end. I just want to let you guys know that I actually ended up getting this one wrong. If you choose not to follow the puppet and you go somewhere else, you can find Mangle walking around. Golden Freddy will just spawn at random. It's unknown what the cause is, unless it is known and it isn't random, but it seems to just be random, and sometimes he'll appear slumped over with blood below him. So sorry for that misinformation. Lastly, sometimes when the minigame is about to end, you will see Purple Guy for a very short moment. Once the minigame ends, you will see purple text in the corner that says, You Can't, which is responding to Save Them. Following the Save Them minigame, this time you play as the puppet, and you successfully give life to the murder victims by putting them inside of the animatronic suits. However, once you give gifts to the four children on screen, a fifth body appears on the floor, and then Golden Freddy jump scares you. Theorists have theorized for a long time that this is telling us why Golden Freddy is in the condition that he is in Five Nights 1 and 2. These four victims were gifted full control of the animatronics, but Golden Freddy's spirit can't get their suit to function. Scott Cawthon has never confirmed this, and this minigame doesn't tell us the why of anything, but this is mostly unanimously agreed upon. At first, this minigame is nothing more than a simple arcade-style game. You play as Freddy, and you deliver cupcakes to six children around you in the pizzeria. But while this is happening, there is another child that is crying outside of the pizzeria. A purple car drives up to the child, purple guy gets out, the child's eyes get larger, then the flow of the tears stop for a second before the child turns gray. Purple guy just killed a child right outside of your pizzeria. As the minigame ends, you are jump scared by the puppet. This likely means that this victim was the one to possess the puppet. Most people believe that. In this simple yet horrific minigame, you play as Foxy. You start off in Pirate's Cove, and you run out into the room with five kids three times. The first time, you run into the room, and the kids are excited. The second time, you run into the room, and the kids are excited. The third time, Purple Guy is standing by Pirate's Cove with a smile on his face, and when you run into the room, all five of the kids are dead. We can assume this takes place at the location from Five Nights 1, just based off of the design of Pirate's Cove. It's not really clear if these five victims are important to the lore. Although, this minigame did help prove the theory that the killer had to have been some sort of worker at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. These four minigames consist of you playing as one of the four main FNAF characters, following a figure appearing as Shadow Freddy who leads you to the back room of Freddy's so Purple Guy can take your suit apart. Theorists and fans believe that this was the killer trying to take the control of the animatronics away from his victims, so they would not be able to come for him. This is basically proven in the next minigame we will be talking about. These minigames also act as a way to give the player clues to access the hidden minigames that are required to get the good ending of the game. We will also be talking about these, so I'll go over the clues and how they work for each of them. This is one of my personal favorites. William Afton, the killer, the purple guy, thought that by dismantling the animatronics, he would be preventing the spirits from being able to attack him, but the spirits are still able to haunt him in a ghostly form. In this minigame, you play as one of the spirits, and scare your killer until he slips into his suit and laughs, as if he has gotten away with his crimes. Unfortunately for him, the safe room that they are in is so broken down and old that rain from outside can seep in. His suit gets wet while he's inside of it, and the spring locks fail and kill him right there. 
This is the first hidden minigame required to get the good ending. You can get this one by double-clicking the drawing of Balloon Boy on camera 8. The clue for this one is in the Post Night 1 minigame, where you can find text that says BBDBL click. This must be done on Night 2. There are a few possible results to this minigame, as well as most of the minigames, so stick with me. Playing as Balloon Boy, your goal is to collect 8 balloons, hence the score starting at 8. In the first room, you can collect a total of 7 balloons, and once you collect those 7, an exit door will appear. Going to the door will end the minigame, but you will have left one balloon behind. There will be no punishment for not getting all 8 balloons, but you will have not cleared the minigame correctly. The correct way to complete this minigame is to collect the 7 balloons in the room, and once you have done so, you don't go through the exit door. Instead, you go straight through the wall through the upper left corner. On the next screen, you will see three figures that resemble Balloon Boy with tears running down their face, as well as a large tree of some sort. Much like most things in this series, this has yet to be given a confirmed explanation. Once you've passed the Balloon Boys and the tree, you will find an odd room with one big balloon. You jump through the bottom left corner and collect the last balloon, and the minigame is over and you've completed it correctly. Mangle's quest also needs to be done on the second night. To access the minigame, you must go onto camera 7, where there's a little pad with 9 buttons. It's a little hard to see, but once you've got your eye on the right place, you need to click the top left button, then the bottom left, then the top right, then the bottom right. If done correctly, the minigame will just begin. I'm not really sure what the hints for this one were, supposedly you can figure it out with the same clues as for BB's Air Adventure, but I don't see it, so shout out to those that could figure this one out. In the minigame, you take control of Mangle, and you need to collect all of your missing parts without letting the person touch you. Likely a reference to Mangle being a take-apart-and-put-back-together attraction for children. If you collect all four of the missing parts without being touched, an exit door will appear. If you go to the door, the minigame will end. However, just like before, this is not the correct way of completing this minigame. Once you collect all four of the missing parts, you are, once again, meant to go through the wall. You clip through the top right of the wall, and then you will start to fall down. When you hit the ground, you will be surrounded by a weird red atmosphere with a silhouette of the puppet. The reasoning for the silhouette has also not been explained. Game Theory thought that this was evidence proving that the crying child in FNAF 4 was the spirit within the puppet because of its positioning and the much longer streams of tears, but we know now that that isn't the case. You walk to the left, you travel across red balloons until you get to the cake. This will end the minigame and is the correct step for getting the good ending. This next one is another step to get the good ending, and it must be done on night 3. To access the minigame, you need to click on all of the grey cupcakes in the cameras. They can be found on camera 2, 3, 4, and 6. The hint for this one can be found in the post night 2 minigame with Bonnie. There are four grey cupcakes in a box on the left. The incorrect way of completing this minigame is collecting four cupcakes, then delivering them to four crying children. An exit door will appear when you do so, and touching it will end the minigame, but again, this will not help you reach the good ending. If you have done all the previous games correctly, once you go down to where the crying children were, you can clip through the top of the wall on the left and give cake to the child that has actually died. This next one is very infamous for its absurd way of getting access, and also just how you play it. You must complete this one on night 4. The clue in the post night 3 minigame is a row of the numbers 395248 without any other indication of what to do with those numbers. Well, you are supposed to use this area of the wall in the main office as a grid of numbers, like you would a cell phone, and put in this code. Again, this is a ridiculous way of accessing a minigame, but I suppose not a whole lot in this series makes a lot of sense. This infamous minigame also doesn't control very well. To get the basic ending, you need to run into the side of the stage you start on, and you will slide right through it. Again, this is the basic ending. You might hover a little bit, but once you're out of the box, you're going to start falling. You will fall past repeats of the location you started in, but eventually you will touch the ground. You walk to the right, and eventually you find an exit door. Touching the exit door will end the minigame, but again, despite being so weird and complicated already, this is not the correct step to getting the good ending. You essentially do all of what I just said until the end. Then you must jump into the bottom left corner of the box you're under, and it will let you float up to the top. Once you're standing on the top of the box, you jump and clip through another copy of the box. Then you can jump into the wall on the right, and it will bring you up to the top. 
from the top, you are able to jump off the edge of the right, and you will hit and clip into a box with a dead child. You give the child cake, and the minigame ends. There are clues that point to how to get to this minigame, but I have no idea how people figured out what to do once you go there. I probably didn't even explain it correctly, because it just feels like doing a bunch of nonsense. The post Night 4 minigame has the weirdest clue, it's just an 8-bit figure of Shadow Bonnie. Well, on Night 5, your final step to getting the good ending is by clicking on a barely noticeable figurine of Shadow Bunny on the desk in the office. And when I say barely noticeable, I mean, you can't even really see it, but it is there. This minigame is really confusing to look at. You take control of Shadow Bonnie, and you have the ability to fly endlessly, and you can also glitch through things much more easily. If you fly into the exit door that's visible from the very beginning, the minigame ends, but of course this isn't how you're meant to do it. In this minigame, touching the bottom left corner will teleport you to different previous minigames. Once you get to the setting of BB's Air Adventure, you need to jump through the top left corner. You will land on a dead child, which is odd, and give them cake. This will end the minigame and will be the final step to getting the good ending of Five Nights 3. This iconic minigame has two possible outcomes, but only one of them is the real good ending. To access this minigame, you need to go to Camera 3 and double-click on the drawing of the puppet on the right wall. You play as the puppet, and if you access this minigame without correctly completing every minigame that I just went over, you will simply walk past these kids in masks, and the only way to end the minigame is to simply go through the exit door. However, if you did complete all the prior minigames, once you walk past the kids in alligator and pig masks, you will see four kids wearing masks of the main Five Nights animatronics, as well as another murdered crying child. You walk up to the table that the maskless child is on the right side of, and you give them cake. The child will then have a Golden Freddy mask, the five masked victims and yourself will then disappear, and your masks will fall to the ground. This is the good ending of Five Nights 3. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 isn't one of my favorites of the series, but I absolutely love this ending. It isn't the canonical one, but I don't even care. This is such a precious and wholesome conclusion. Sure, the path to getting the minigames is beyond absurd, but it's weirdly calming to finally see that these tortured souls are finally able to rest because you were able to let them free. We're greeted by FNAF 4 with five days until the party, before we have our first introduction to the protagonist and his imaginary friend, the Fredbear plush. The plush says, what did he do this time? He locked you in your room again. Don't be scared, I'm here with you. Then we take control of the crying child. If you go over to the Freddy and friends plushies in the corner, the crying child will say, these are my friends. And if you try to leave the room, you won't be able to. The crying child will break down on the ground and the words, tomorrow is another day, will be said by the Fredbear plush, and the minigame will end. It is now four days until the party. You start this minigame in the same place as the pre-Night 1 minigame, but now you can walk out of the room. You can explore the house a little, but not much is noteworthy until you walk by the TV. When you do, the crying child's older brother will scare you in a foxy mask. Just like in the first minigame, the plush will say, tomorrow is another day, as the minigame ends. Of course, it is now three days until the party. For some reason, you start this one in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The Fredbear plush says, he left without you. He knows that you hate it here. You are right beside the exit. If you run, you can make it. Hurry, run towards the exit. You start to run to the right, but you are stopped by an employee in a costume. The Fredbear plush will say, It's too late. Hurry the other way and find someone who will help. You know what will happen if he catches you. You then run to the left where you can see the shadows of the Fredbear and Spring Bonnie animatronics. Interestingly, if you walk back to the right, you will see a purple figure helping an employee into their costume. The plush says, you can find help if you get past them, you have to be strong. But once you try to get any further, the employee from before will appear to your right and the child breaks down on the ground. Once again, we are told tomorrow is another day and the minigame ends. Two days until the party. This minigame also starts inside of Freddy's. The Fredbear plush says, he hates you. You have to get up. You can get out this time, but you have to hurry. And you are able to leave the restaurant this time. 
Once you leave Freddy's, you will run into a lot of other kids that you can talk to. By the restaurant, you can talk to another child holding a plush trap doll. If you talk to the child, they ask you, where's your plush toy? Mine is Spring Bonnie. My daddy says I have to be careful with him or I will pinch my finger. He is a finger trap, he says. If you walk further down, you'll find another child in an orange dress. When you talk to her, she says some weird things. You'd better watch out. I hear they come to life at night. And if you die, they hide your body and never tell anyone. Why do you look so worried? See you at the party. Ha ha ha. You know, just some friendly banter. If you continue to walk down, you'll run into another child in a green shirt sitting on the sidewalk laughing hysterically. When you go to talk to them, they say, Aren't you the kid who always hides under the table and cries? Ha ha ha. No one else is scared. Why are you? Stop being such a baby. This child lives an absolutely fantastic life. If you then walk to the left and then up, you can talk to another child in a purple shirt with some Freddy's figurines. They will say, Why are you crying? Don't you like my collection? It's worth mentioning that the child's Chica toy has a broken beak. This is likely because the toy Chica animatronic in FNAF 2 is missing her beak. Scott Cawthon has directly told us that in some way this is an important detail. If you continue going towards the left, you'll see a kid holding a pink balloon. When you talk to them, they say, Are you going to the party? Everyone is going to the party. Oh wait, you have to go. It's your birthday. Haha. -ha. Also worth mentioning, this kid looks a lot like Balloon Boy. Another one of these kids does have baby's pigtails, but this child is clearly meant to look like Balloon Boy. Once you finally reach home, the minigame can end by going to the crying child's bedroom, and their older brother once again jump scares you with a foxy mask. After being scared, the minigame once again ends with Tomorrow is Another Day. There are a couple more important easter eggs, though. If you go to the TV when first entering the house, you can find the infamous 1983 easter egg, revealing what year we are currently in. Also, if you go to the far right, you'll go into a bedroom with Mangle torn apart on the floor. This is a bit of a weird one. The minigame starts with One Day Until the Party, and you start in a spare parts room at Freddy's. The child cries at the door and says, Please let me out. Please. The child falls over and continues to say, Please let me out. And the screen abruptly fades to black, with no real explanation or continuation of that concept. Zero days until the party. Today is the day. The minigame starts with the crying child being surrounded by his older brother and his friends. They taunt him for being afraid and ridicule him, laughing amongst each other. The older brother says, why don't we help him get a closer look? He will love it. And the child cries, no, please. But the older brother says, come on guys, let's give this little man a lift. He wants to get up close and personal. The four older children pick up the crying child and carry him over to the Fredbear and Spring Bonnie animatronics. The crying child shakes and flails in fear as they walk him closer and closer. They approach the animatronics on stage and the older brother says, Hey guys, I think the little man said he wants to give Fredbear a big kiss. On three, one, two, and the kids lift the crying child into the mouth of the singing Fredbear, laughing as they do it. But the tears from the crying child loosen the spring locks of the Fredbear animatronic. The mouth closes, crushes the child's head, and kills him. The child stops moving, the kids stop laughing, and the screen fades to black. The first screen of this minigame shows us the crying child in a black void, with the plush Fredbear in front of him, and the Freddy and Friends plushies behind the Fredbear plush. The crying child's older brother, who we can't see on screen, says, Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. I'm sorry. The Fredbear plush, presumably, says, You're broken. We are still your friends. Do you still believe that? I'm still here. I will put you back together. Every plush fades as the Fredbear plush speaks, and Fredbear itself fades away after its final words. The child cries and fades away as well, as a faint flat line goes off in the background. It is debated who is actually speaking these words. It is a very, very slightly different color of yellow than Fredbear's other text, so some people theorize that this is William Afton, who is the crying child's father. But again, I am not sure what this is actually meant to mean. Again, not a whole lot of explanations, but 
that's just something to discuss maybe in the comments. Fun with Plush Trap is a simple minigame that you can play before each night for a chance to advance the night by a couple hours. Plush Trap moves forward when you're not shining your flashlight, and you need to try to stop him with your flashlight once he's on the X in front of you. If you flash your flashlight too much, you lose since he won't get to the X. If you get him on the X, you win. And if you're too slow with shining the light, you will get jump scared. Getting to Circus Baby's minigame is completely random and can only be done after getting a game over. Your goal with this minigame is to give every single child enough cupcakes. There are different types of cupcakes that you can pick up that all do different things. It seems impossible on the first attempt, but if you save your cupcakes correctly by going back and forth and performing some difficult jumps, you can give every kid the right amount of cupcakes. Once you give every kid cupcakes, an ice cream will appear at the end of the stage. The music will change and sound a little more disturbing. You need to take the ice cream to the very beginning of the stage. When you do, you will drop the ice cream and lose control of Baby. A little girl will walk towards Baby, and when trying to take the ice cream, Baby will kill her with the claw built inside of her. There is no point in breaking these down individually because they are simply continuations of each other. Once you beat each challenge of Sister Location's Custom Night, you get different cutscenes of the protagonist believed to be Michael Afton, slowly decaying day by day after getting scooped at the end of Sister Location. This is technically a cutscene and not a minigame, but it's very quick and simple and has the 8-bit style, so I just decided to include it in here anyway. The opening of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator is an actual 8-bit game that takes place in a pizzeria, where you have to design your pizza and then give it to kids. Once you play for a little, the game glitches like crazy until the real game begins. If I were to guess, this was the developer wanting us to be under the impression that this was going to be a spin-off or a troll game. It wasn't exactly made clear that this game was coming out, so it was a bit of a surprise to the community. Nobody really knew what to expect. Alright, well, most of the playtest games are not important at all, however, they are mini-games, so I guess I have to mention them. I'll make this quick! Balloon Barrel is where you grab a balloon, you jump into the ball pit. The duck pond is just picking up ducks that give you different amounts of points. Ball Pit Tower is a tower with a ball pit. Ladder Tower is indeed a tower of ladders and monkey bars. Carnival Hoops is basketball. Riding Rockets is a shoot 'em up game. Lemonade and Fruit Punch Clowns are German clowns that scare kids. Although there is a chance of them saying a creepy line. Tell anyone about this and I cut your throat. The balloon cart gives you a balloon. The deluxe ball pit is a large ball pit. Gravity Vortex is a shoot 'em up game. And Prize King will either give you nothing or a very valuable prize. Did you get all that? Good. I don't care. Candy Cadet usually doesn't do anything but give you a piece of candy that will give you a certain amount of points, but there is a chance that he will tell you a story. His three different stories all consist of five things being destroyed and five things melting into one thing. One of them is a story of five keys being melted into the shape of one key, as well as five kids inevitably dying. And the last story is a story of five dead kids being sewn together to fit into a single coffin. The significance of these stories is up for debate. Everyone interprets things in different ways, but most people believe these stories to resemble Ennard. I see these stories as horrific and horrifying, even for this series. Midnight Motorist is the minigame that left every Five Nights theorist pissed. The regular game is nothing but a racing game, but if you can escape through a small gap that quickly appears in the bottom line, you will access the hidden minigame. You'll start by driving through a forest, and you'll have the chance to go west or south. If you decide to go west, you will arrive at a location called Juniors, where you will get out of the car and reveal that you are playing as an orange figure. When you walk up to the location, you will talk to a green figure that says, Come on, you know you can't be here. Don't make this more difficult than it has to be and you will have no other option but, but to return to the car and head back south. Continuing down the path will result in approaching your home. You walk inside, and if you interact with the 8-bit person in the chair watching TV, they will say, leave him alone tonight, he had a rough day. Continuing to go up, you will run into a closed door that you cannot open, and your character says, I told you not to close your door. This is my house, he can't ignore me like that. Going up to the door a second time, he will yell, Open the door! I'll find a way from outside. 
You then proceed to go outside and to the back of the house in an attempt to get in the room and you find a shattered window and two different shapes of footprints. Your character will say, ran off to that place again. He will be sorry when he gets back. And then the minigame ends. Most people believe this to be the house from Five Nights 4. The person watching the TV is the older brother, the kid that locked his door and ran away is the grandchild, and that would make your character William Afton. Some people believe that this isn't the case because William has always famously been represented with the color purple, and depicting him as orange would be a very odd choice. There is no definitive answer as to what this minigame is meant to tell us, but it has been a pretty frustrating piece of the lore for theorists. Much like Midnight Motorist, this is a minigame that starts off as a normal arcade game. You play as a little girl and you run through a maze, collecting fruit and getting power-ups. However, of course, there is a twist with this minigame. If you manage to beat the game by collecting all of the fruit within the time limit and then play it once again, the game gets a little creepier. The oranges are replaced with a dead dog, and the music is much more unsettling. The girl in the background also changes from having a smile to crying in the background. The gameplay doesn't really change though, so if you can beat the game a second time, the third time you play the minigame, it is impossible to beat. The dead dogs are now more torn apart, and the other fruits are replaced with a coffin and flowers. The lightning power-up is no longer usable, so it is actually impossible to beat this minigame three times in a row. Once you run out of time, the girl in the background will be seen with William Afton in his spring bonnie suit behind her. Afton will say, he is not really dead, he is over here, follow me, and the minigame will end. Most theorists believe this girl to be the one who possesses Chica, named Susie. There have been many instances relating Chica to a story with a dead dog, and there has been plenty of evidence to back this theory. It is also believed that the spirit of this dog goes on to possess Mangle. There isn't a lot of evidence to support this, but the dog is missing an eye just like Mangle, and it would explain why Mangle can be seen in the FNAF 4 house. The Security Puppet minigame is one of the darkest and most fascinating minigames in the entire series. When you play this minigame, your goal is to prevent a child with a green security bracelet from reaching the exit. However, this child will never appear. You play the minigame twice, and your assigned child simply won't appear. Because when you play it for a third time, you will see a girl with a green bracelet locked outside looking through the window. They will fade into the darkness, and it is your job as the security puppet to go outside and get them. The puppet goes outside into the rain and starts to short out from getting water damage. The puppet falls to the ground, nearly completely broken, and lays on the child's dead body. This is undoubtedly the origin story of the puppet. William Afton killed this girl that was alone outside at night, and the security puppet came outside to protect her, and when he shorts out with her right there, her spirit possesses the puppet. This is basically just another angle of the Take Cake minigame, just with more information. This is one of the most important minigames on this list, and it is so sad but so interesting to get this kind of confirmation in the lore. In Ultimate Custom Night, if you set Old Man Consequences to level 1 and play with just him in the game, collecting the fish like you're supposed to will trigger a hidden minigame. It'll look like Freddy is falling down, and then you'll be in control of Freddy. You'll be surrounded by trees with Old Man Consequences by a pond where he's fishing. If you go up to Old Man Consequences, he'll say, come sit with me a while. Leave the demons to his demons. Rest your own soul. You can then glitch through the top of the pond, and the game will crash. There is actually quite a bit to cover here. What Old Man Consequences is saying is believed to be directed at the vengeful spirit we see in the game, and it is also believed that this vengeful spirit is named Cassidy, and is the spirit within Golden Freddy. And you may have heard this before, if you speed up the audio in the background, it will sound like someone is screaming Mike and Help, which is really interesting and disturbing. All of this and some other details throughout the lore is why theorists believe that Ultimate Custom Knight is William Afton's personal hell. 
He is being tortured, and the mind behind the tormenting is none other than Golden Freddy. Old Man Consequences is trying to convince Golden Freddy to stop torturing Afton because there is simply nothing left. Leave the demon to his demons. In all ports of Help Wanted, you are able to officially beat the game by collecting a series of hidden tapes that will bring you closer and closer to being face to face with Glitch Trap. However, this is too complex of a feature to be in a mobile port of the game. So the way that the developers made up for this was this minigame. Your goal in this series is to light a series of fires. These are presumably the replacements of the tapes. While you navigate around this dungeon, you need to avoid the glitch trap sprites, but you are able to recover health from the hearts. Some say this minigame has lore significance. I have no idea what the lore significance could be. I guess glitch trap is now important to the lore, and maybe our character has significance? I don't really know to be honest, so if you know any information about why this minigame could actually be important, uh, let me know in the comments below. Well everybody, that is the end of the road. Although this video was definitely a pain in the ass to write and edit, it was honestly an absolute joy to look back on all of these memories. As someone who has been along for the journey since the very beginning, a lot of these minigames represent moments of my life that were dedicated to enjoying this series. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if there's anything I missed or got wrong, let me know. Again, a lot of cutscenes were left out because I don't think those classify as minigames, but I could actually make another video with those. And again, if there's any information in this video that I got wrong, feel free to correct me because there was a lot of stuff to go through, and I may have missed a couple details. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you would like to support me, make sure to hit the subscribe button to keep updated with my other videos, some of which will continue to be Five Nights at Freddy's related. Uh, hit like to support this video, and uh, links down below for my social media, and I also have a second channel, all that sort of good stuff. Thank you everybody so much for watching once again, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.